those ramblers will not be happy. <laughs> oh my god. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening, wherever time it is where you are. Hello, I'm at Caterham Cars in Crawley because I'm picking up the 270S. Now, I was meant to be picking up the 270R, but it was a little bit of confusion, but either way, it's gonna be good fun. Now, this isn't the first time I've driven a Caterham. As you may have seen earlier this year, I drove a 160S, which is actually right behind me. The very car I drove, they are, it's just it. Uh, lurking over my right shoulder. So I drove that and that was a massive amount of fun and that only had 80 horsepower. This time I'm going to be driving the 270S as, as, as I've mentioned. This very car right here, there we go. There we go, that one. There we are. So yes, so that's got more power. That's got a 1.6 litre Ford engine which is pumping out, I believe it's 135 horsepower. So it's a faster car, it's not too far of double the power of the 160S. So it should be good but before I try and squeeze myself into it. Let me show you around because I've got a pretty good showroom here. So they have a little showroom down at the Caterham Cars Depot in Crawley. Well, I say little, well it is kind of little, but as Caterhams aren't very big, there's plenty in here. So behind me, as you probably can't see, do let me turn the camera around? That way you don't see my, my face, that's why you don't see my ugly mug. So you've got plenty of seven sprints. Not too sure whether they're for new owners or whether they're gonna be press cars, but they're brand spanking new. In fact, the leather, still has the plastic on it to protect it and it's different shapes and sizes in here well not that many different shapes and sizes I suppose however if I come down here just look at all these lovely cage rooms if I come down here this is pretty interesting now what we have here is a clay model this would have been the Caterham C120 so let me just bring it down so you can see it more like so so this was originally a joint project with Alpine. As you know, Alpine has released the A110 this year. Well, it was unveiled last year. So this was a joint project with Alpine and then that fell through and then Renault and Alpine decided to go their own way and produce the A110. Shame really, because that looks pretty good. And if you look at the design, let's be honest, it's not a million miles away from the A110, is it? So it definitely has a similar kind of look. So, shame it would have been pretty good to see. Now another cage room that's a little bit different is this one here. So let's come around, I'll tell you what it is because I must confess I don't know what it is off the top of my head. So this is uh, to do a 21 Super Sport 1.6. So there we go. So if you want a cage room with a bit more practicality and one that looks more like a car, then this could be one for you. And this is priced at 22,000, oh, is that a focus? Got the autofocus on this camera, it's, it's awful. There we go, 22,995 pounds. So about the same price as a Mazda MX-5 or a Fiat uh, 124 Spider. But imagine how cool you'd look if you rock up in this. I've never seen one of these on the road, so you know, a nice bit of exclusivity there, right for you. Now I really like this one. So this one was made, um, in uh, collaboration with, I've got to pronounce his name wrong, um, Kamu Kobayashi? Kobayashi. Mm, I'm pretty sure I've got it wrong, but he's a Formula One driver, which means I know nothing about him, so I don't follow Formula One. So this was made in conjunction, you know, this was made uh, through the, uh, the partnership between Caterham and said driver. 
It looks really cool. You've got black with the matte black stripe. And look at this. Green carbon fiber. Oh, that is nice. And as you can see, it's a single seater. But obviously, if you wanted to put another seat in, you could do that. Oh, look. Didn't notice that. Green carbon fiber on the dashboard as well. Four point harness. Very nice indeed. So, roof is down. It's dry. The sun is trying to come out. So let's take you around the car quickly. There we are, that's the car. No, I'm only kidding. So you've got the Momo steering wheel, got the wooden dashboard, which isn't to my taste, but you know, horses for courses. But I do like these brown leather seats. If I come around like so, it's a very nice and sumptuous. And look at that, you've got the logo embroidered into the seat as well. I like that very much. Got the green livery with the yellow stripe. Again, I rather like that. It's quite a traditional look. And there we have it. 270S. Now, this hasn't got the adjustable suspension. So if I come down here, you can see it's got um, Bilstein shocks. But on the R model, so this is a 360R, you can see, actually, let's come around here. You can see you've got the bits where you can adjust the suspension. So that's obviously for the R models. But on this, it's not adjustable, but let's face it, I'm not going to need that. I'm not, as much as I'd like, like to take this, take this to a track, I won't be doing such a thing. Which is a pity, really, but hopefully I'll be able to find some roads where I can have some pretty good fun with it. So anyway, enough talking, let's jump in. Right, let's start her up now. Am I going to be able to drive this with my trainers? As you know what, I probably will be able to. But can I bring this seat forward? Yes, I can. A little bit more. Yeah, I should be okay with the um, pedals actually. When I drove the 160S, the brake and the throttle were too close together for my trainers, but in this it's not too bad. I am wearing different trainers, so that could obviously be. Oh, I can't get the saw clipped in. Ugh. So I'm wearing different trainers, so it could well be the solution as well. So, right, so key in the ignition, you don't have to use that little immobiliser thing. I think, it's, I think it's already done that. Right, time to start her up. A few revs. Oh, hello, more tea, Vicar. <laughs> right, let's get on the open road. I just tried to set off and I was judgy as hell so I think I will take my trainers off after all because I haven't got very good contact with the pedal so I was like ooh, ooh, ooh. I was like a learner on their first lesson so trainers to come off right yeah it's a bit more like it oh the indicator screech at you. I don't like that. For one six, yes, didn't do that. That is going to get annoying, I won't lie. Now, the roads around here aren't particularly interesting. Soon I'm going to be getting onto the M23 and then the M25. I know, exciting, right? Shut up! Guys, I'm really sorry about that. There's nothing I can do about that. So, I'm not going to talk too much now because the roads around here are pretty dull, to be honest. So once I get somewhere that's a bit more picturesque with some nicer roads, 
I will um, do a bit more talking and tell you a little bit more about the car. So I've pulled over to get my breath back and just to reflect on what a blast that was. Now I've only driven it on the motorway so far. So I've come to Ranmore Common which is where I film my car reviews because it's quite nice around here and the roads are pretty decent as well. But before I jump back in the car let me tell you more about the specification. So underneath that long retro style bonnet you have a 1.6 litre naturally aspirated petrol unit which is lifted from a Ford Focus. Okay, I admit that doesn't sound particularly exciting, but it's been tuned and fettled and it produces 135 horsepower with 165 newton meters of torque. Again, that doesn't sound particularly exciting, but don't forget that car weighs just 540 kilograms, so it's about half of the weight of a Mazda MX-5. So you'll hit 60 miles per hour in just five seconds and the top speed is 122 miles per hour, but as the car is so low down to the floor, I imagine 122 will probably feel more like um, a million because you're so low down to the floor in that car and it's a cliche and many have said it before I think I've even said it when I drove the 160s but it does literally feel like a big go-kart it's very fun anyway enough talking back in the car more driving really annoying right now I was hoping to do like a 0 to 60 down here because this road is kind of straight and it's kind of flat okay not the straightest bit of road but it'll have to do so first gear okay 0 to 60 in 3 2 1 go <laughs> Ramblers will not be happy. <laughs> oh my god. They must have heard me coming a mile off. Right. I'm going to go and collect my camera for the Ramblers, take it and smash it up as revenge. I'm getting a few dirty stairs. I don't think they like the Catrum. What a bunch of killjoys. Right. Let's get my camera back and get the hell out of Dodge. Right. Oh. How good does that sound, by the way? It sounds so meaty, and so often it coughs and splutters, but in a good way. It's five speed like manual gearbox, it's pretty slick. Although you do need to be rather firm with it sometimes. And you know what? The ride isn't that bad. Obviously, if you were to hit a pothole, which you should really try to avoid in a car like this, by the way, your back would break into a million pieces, but so would the car probably, and so would your wallet. So, obviously, in a car like this, you're going to try and avoid speed humps, potholes, that kind of thing, leaves, twigs. No, I'm only joking. It's not that bad. Even on small bumps, it soaks them up quite well. So that's no issue whatsoever. And the steering wheel, it is, <laughs> it's almost laughable at how small it is. I've eaten off bigger plates than this. But it does the job really well. Steering is so, so direct, really, really direct. You barely need to move the steering wheel and it'll just go, boom, just go straight where you want it to. And this really is a proper, driver's car it really is drop it to full get a bit more power oh my god it's so so direct right on the brakes not too hard though pop in second Whoa, on the brakes again Whoa. the 
back stepped out a little bit. But that adds to the fun. Got other brakes again. Oh, it's a bit dirty down here, it's a bit muddy. Got to be a little bit careful in regards to grip. Got a blind press come up. Whoa! Ha! I almost got a little bit of air there then. The whole thing just pivots around your hips. If you think the Mazda MX-5 is engaging, try one of these. It will blow your socks off. And to think this isn't the most powerful Caterham model that they can offer you. It's just insane. Imagine what the 620R is like. You'd have to be really unhinged to drive that. You'd have to be a stark raving lunatic. So there we have it guys. My first ever experience of a Caterham 270S. My word, that was an absolute blast. And thankfully I've got the car for the whole weekend. Now the weather's meant to be a little bit iffy, but hopefully it will hold out. But either way, I'm going to have immense fun with this car. So I'm going to leave it for now. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up and please subscribe for more car obsession.